Back to back 50 point games for Bernard King. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move by Jordan! <laughs> Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! When you see that, the first time you saw people in the crowd wearing your jersey, and now there's a lot of them. I mean, Sean Puffy Combs wears your jersey. What does that feel like? I mean, it feels good, but, you know, at the same time, I, it, it really doesn't. I mean, I don't really want to think about it because that's just, you know, I just, I just want to play ball and have fun that way. You know, most people, like a Gary Payton, a guy you play against, crowds hate him. Uh, Scottie Pippen gets with that experience just this week when he went back to Houston. You're a guy that the opponents fans love. Jason's dream began in Bell, West Virginia, where he starred as a point guard for the DuPont Panthers, spending hour after hour in the gym thanks to his father, Terry, who had the keys. Jason's dad is, uh, or was a state trooper. He helped provide security for the school. His father had a key to the high school gym, and Williams could practice anytime he wanted to. Basketball, basketball, and when he wasn't in the gym, he was in the house dribbling. So that meant Jason had uh, instant access to the gym just about any time that he wanted. I don't think without that key, I won't be sitting right here, but. You know, it was nice. I went in there three or four hours just going in, dribbling, doing ball handling drills. Never really even shoot the ball for three or four hours. I'd be in there all by myself and, you know, just working on my handle because I knew that's, I wanted to be a point guard and point guards had to handle the ball really well, especially in this league. Bouncing that ball about drove me crazy. That's when he honed his skills that made him one of the NBA's most dynamic players. You know, I met your boy Randy. He said, oh, yeah, you met Moss? I said, yeah. He said, tell him. He know I'll lock him up. Yeah. One on one. And lets it fly. Way down for Randy Moss. He's got it. Moss trying to outrun him. He does. Touchdown, Minnesota. Many people talk about Allen Iverson. Randy Moss is the Allen Iverson of wide receivers. I mean, he is cold blooded. <laughs> Told him that he fell out laughing. <laughs> Explain that. I know you two grew up together. I know y'all got a chemistry. Y'all yeah. boys. Man, I know he's one of the greatest receivers ever. But... Ever. He is the fastest wide receiver that I have seen that was a good receiver. I'm talking about track, speed, 4-3, four, 4-3. Four. Man, I'm going to light it up. Ferrat airs it out. Guess who? Moss. Another catch. Another touch. It was like basketball on the football field. Randy Moss and Jason Williams both had great professional careers, but they never forgot where they came from. Two legends, one small town high school. From the football field to the basketball court. Jason Williams has been playing ball all of his life. Growing up in the tiny town of Bell, West Virginia, he spent much of his childhood in the gym, practicing basketball with his pal, Randy Moss. Williams made it to the NBA, Randy Moss to the NFL. A lot of people don't know that you played both and you was really good in both. Um, take us through, like, you know, playing basketball in high school. Well, um, playing with white chocolate, of course, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize that, you know, he was an all-around athlete himself. Moss vividly remembers Williams running all over his team. You know, when we were growing up, we competed. The first year me and Jason Williams ever met was homecoming. You know, all little cheerleaders all dressed nice, little bows in their hair and everything. And in an interview in 2013, Moss said, We were in fourth grade playing midget football on different teams. He was a quarterback and ran a bootleg. Next thing we knew, he was high-stepping into the end zone like Walter Payton. We wanted to kill him, but we could never catch him. Jason went to the All-American game, and, you know, they took, you know, West Virginia being a small state. A couple guys. So Jason went. Then the following year, they had one guy that was actually him and Jason were rivals, but oh, Jason God. was a year older than us. So he got selected to go, and then I'm sitting there like, well, where's my invitation? Mm. So they selected me to go. Once we got to high school and start really learning more about the world and, and sports and things, we really started coming together. 
and trying to win something. By eighth grade, Moss and Williams were on the same team as quarterback and receiver. Being the freak athletes they were, no one in the area could stop the deadly one-two punch. Williams said, I throw it as far as I could and Randy would get it. This connection stayed strong all the way through high school. Williams and Moss on the football field and the basketball court were the best athletes their small town had ever seen, and arguably the best duo the state of West Virginia had ever seen. Both athletes went to DuPont High School and played multiple sports. You know, he's a great football player, he's a, he's a great basketball player, he's a great baseball player, and ping pong I'm sure he's good, but you know, as long as he puts his mind to it, I think he can do it. In 1994, Coach Fout led the DuPont High School basketball team as the Panthers lit up the scoreboard with plays from Randy Moss and Jason Williams. As just a freshman, Williams was the headliner for his varsity team. But by his senior season, both Williams and Moss were on a different level from their peers. Williams averaged 18 and 10 on his way to receiving West Virginia State Player of the Year, and Moss had received All-State honors as well. But it wasn't just their dominance that has made them immortal in West Virginia history books. It's the way they did it. Williams was throwing 60-foot alley-oops to Moss. Behind the back passes and 30-point blowouts were a regular occurrence at DuPont. The main gym at the high school held 1,000 people. People. But if you weren't there an hour early, you weren't getting in. Their high school coach, Jim Fout, said, People would drive for miles away to see them play. We pulled up from ESPN and TNT. The kids were better entertainers. And as all legends have a defining moment, Moss and Williams had theirs that season. They knew they were watching history. And what was crazy is when I first met you, at the Nike All-American mm, camp in, uh, in, Indiana, in, in right. no, it was in Illinois. 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 In, Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. Indianapolis, okay. Yes, yes. So uh, when, they, when they brought us there and, uh, you know, bringing all those athletes in, it right. was, Different. you know, you, the big names were you, Ron Mercer. Right. And then the underclassman there was Shea Cotton out of California. Ooh, you remember, remember him? Okay. Very all right. Good. Shout to Shea Cotton. There you go. Right. So, you know, a lot of of the athletes that were there were basketball all year round gym rats. Mm. So when I got there, I was a seasonal athlete. So got there, seen you, you guys, uh, top five guys, top ten guys in the country. So in a roundabout way, I kind of... Um, kind of got depressed a little bit, you know what wow. I'm saying? And just for the fact that I know I couldn't compete with oh, you guys. Wow. And wow. I got a funny, funny story for you. We played and there was a rain delay. You were out in the court by yourself. You're out there shooting the ball. And so I just love, you know, basketball, like we sit here and holding the basketball right now. So right. you were out there shooting. We were on a rain delay because uh, it was a bad storm coming through. So they stopped all the ball Paul playing Fianne, right. and brought everybody, to, in, right. brought everybody in. So you're there playing on, on the court. So I just come out there and shoot around with you. So for some apparent reason, I just said check ball. All right, I know you're not going to remember this, but I do. I told you check ball. So this is really what discouraged me. You and Shea Cotton helped me go to football. So I stuttered, then tried to go to the hole real quick. Laid that thing high off the glass where that white box is. You went up there and cleaned my ball. You went up there and cleaned it. So when you went up there and cleaned it, I looked up there and I'm like, man, he can jump that high. And we in Indianapolis. Yeah, so it was just a lot of just a lot of guys that, you know, you, Vince Carter. I remember A.I. was there. I remember a bunch of guys. A lot of there. guys, yeah, man. So yeah. I, I think in our era, you know, looking at the guys, you know, some went to college, some, you know, right. of course, went straight to, to the yeah. NBA. Right. You know, shout out to you and Shea Cotton, man, because... If y'all really wouldn't have discouraged me to play basketball, I mean, to, to play football, then where would I be at right. today? The love of the game, man, is just like you can go anywhere. Right. You know, if we were, if we could lace them up right, right here behind us, man, we can get it in. Right. So right. I think the love of the game you develop, you know, as, as in your youth. Right. And then as you grow older, you, you continue to love the game. So, man, I've always had the love of the game ever since I was six years old. That's great, man. I'm glad you chose football because without that, we wouldn't have got to see the great Randy Moss <laughs> and blessing us with some real skill, my dear. Yes, sir. After leaving college, Jason worked out with members of the Orlando Magic, honing his skills and raising his stock. 
Nick Anderson of the Magic, you know, he called me. He was just right down in Orlando, and we had the same agent. And I went down and moved in with him and started working out with those guys. They really knew a lot more about the game than I did, but, you know, once I got going and it started working out and lifting weights and getting a little bit stronger, I started fitting in, I guess. With the seventh pick in the 1998 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Jason Williams from the University of Florida. The Sacramento Kings select Jason Williams from the University of Florida. One of several new faces in Sacramento is rookie point guard Jason Williams. His flashy style has brought him plenty of attention this year. Here's his story. I always tell people once I started playing ball, I always thought to myself that I could play at this level because, you know, if you, if you set high goals and, and you shoot for them, you, I think you have a better chance than saying in the back of your mind, well, I don't know if I can play in the league. So. The King surprised everybody by taking this kid, especially myself. I talked to uh, Jeff Petrie that afternoon in the draft, and he told me, no, no, you got it wrong. We're not taking this kid. And uh, so I got back to him uh, earlier this week, and I, and I said to him, you know, why did you feel necessary to fool me and everybody else? He said the reason was the Lakers were trying to get above the Kings to get Jason Williams, so he didn't want to let on. He said the reason he didn't want to let on more than any, anything else is that Two years before, the Lakers had uh, gone above him to get Kobe Bryant. Uh, the Kings had the 13th pick, uh, the 14th pick. They went to the Hornets. They traded Vlade Divac to the Hornets to get Kobe Bryant. Two, 12 turnovers for Sacramento. Jason Williams right down the other end. Jason Williams for three, knocks it down. Stojakovic, Jason Williams, hooks in the three. Penetration in dish. Williams now three for three from downtown. And free throw attempts 13 to 2. Jason Williams <laughs> gets the roll on the three pointer. Shot clock is turned off. Rick Allen yelling at Jason Williams to hold for one. That's a tough assignment for Rick Allen to give him a calm down for a moment. Williams shooting over O'Neal. <laughs> Look at the pass to Stojakovic. You don't do it any better than that. Williams pushing it. Blind pass to Anderson for the reverse. If you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. Jason Williams plays basketball. No holds barred. <laughs> Very entertaining. And a nice feed from Jason Williams to Thunderbird. He loves the game and he has energy for the game. It's contagious. Jason Williams just waited for Weber. I tell you, Cotton, this guy is amazing. I, I knew he was going to be good, but he's better than I thought. You know, I, I, I mean, I get a lot of respect, too, but... You know, I think a lot comes from these guys, you know, they're, they're on the other end of these passes or whatever, you know, catching and finishing. You ever hit him in the head? I never hit him. <laughs> him? Who have you hit? I think I've hit Vladi a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I think he broke Vladi's nose, man. <laughs> <laughs> William steals. Oh, yes! Oh, no! Look at Vladi's hands down by, down by his knees and <laughs> conk. And they're, they're coming from all angles. I mean, you're used to a guy setting you up and you know where it's coming from. This guy, you never know when the ball is going to come. Yeah, right? I think you, me you mess up when you try to anticipate what he's going to do. The best way to play with him is just get your feet ready. At any time, just get your feet ready so you don't travel because you don't know what he's going to do. A lot of times, he messes me up because he'll fake the pass at me, then fake the shot, and then come right back with the pass. So you just really got to just expect the unexpected when you play with him. You know, I could you know, almost read his mind sometimes, and uh, he's fun to play with. He's a guy that you really don't know what he's going to do next. You just have to know that you're going to be ready, that you need to be ready. So playing with Jason is great. Debbie again, through the leg, stolen. Jason, oh, what a pass! You be kidding me! I tell everybody I'd really have 15 assists and 60 points a game, you know, I just... As long as uh, see where Vlad and Corliss are happy, then I'll be happy. How did he see him there? Well, his name is Jason Williams, that's why. He did it again. I knew who needed the ball and where they needed the ball. So, that you know, these guys today, they're trying to get 30, and, you know, usually they get 10 just because they're so aggressive. <laughs> People like Larry Bird have said that you're one of the best passers he's ever seen. You've been compared to Pete Maravich. Was there a move of yours that you, that's your favorite? There's so many people who like to talk about you and their favorite white chocolate moves, but what you? know, you? There, there, there's a pass that I made in Indiana. I, it's, it's, you got to pull it up. I don't uh, Mark Jackson, Rick Smith was at the elbows. And I'm coming down, and Vladi's trailing. And here come Reggie Miller shooting across. I threw it through, uh, threw it between both of Smith's and Jackson. They turned around, was chasing the ball, 
And Reggie Miller kind of dove for the ball, and I just got it, flicked it right back. Vladi was running the whole way. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Uh -huh. when, when, when you, when oh. you, when you do moves. <laughs> Probably the greatest point guard defender ever in the history of NBA. And when you make him try to trip you, this is a super crossover. I mean, he, he, he hesitated for a minute, throws Gary Payton, and then just the crossover shit. <laughs> And GP got to use his legs <laughs> to try to trip you to stop you. You know you for real. People call it white chocolate, behind the back, between the legs, the no-look pass. It's not too many guys that I played against. When we switch a pick and roll, mm -hmm. and I want a guard, <laughs> I get fast. Like this dude right here would do something so creative to embarrass you out there. He's got some insane handles. He'll try just about anything, which is honestly fun to watch. Every once in a while, complete something crazy, and you'll be like, wow. Epic elbow pass. Oh, my goodness. Crazy. To Rafe LaFrance. Rafe LaFrance totally oh, messed come this on. up. One of my favorite players ever to watch. Man. Because I think he, he created what, what, what Steph Curry does, what Russell Westbrook does, pace and space. J-Dub, uh, to me, you're one of the best point guards to ever play the game, especially yeah, with all your trickery. Appreciate it. All right, slow motion, you just put it there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, need, we need it in slower motion. Oh, in slower motion. <laughs> hey, shout out to Ray LaFrance. He got fouled, man. He would have finished it. Right. He would have <laughs> finished. Mm. Oh, you get it all the way around. Mm. Right to him. Mm. Oh, man. Shots from there in the first half. Jason Williams, another three, and that rattles down. Is either team going to miss? We'll find out. Jason Williams. <laughs> Gasol down on the block against Robert Ory. Rick Fox coming over to help. Space for Jason Williams. Three-point shot is good. Jason Williams now with 17. Here comes Jason Williams. Shaq behind, and Shaq can't get there to block that shot. And Jason Williams beat L.A. champ very well already. Uh -oh, Steal by Jason Williams. Coming against Derek Fisher for the finish. He gets it quickly. He, nice steal that time by Jason Williams. Gives it to Powell Gasol, who throws it down on Devin George. You have to put Nabisky back in that pick and roll. Oh, what a pass! Here's Jason Williams behind oh. the back. Out of the Let's get it out there. In our era, we want to crush each other. We want to knock each other's heads off. What do you think about these guys in today's game going to join forces? Friendly ball. Um, it is. Everybody believes this will be the last game he plays here in a Cavs uniform. And I'll be sad and disappointed. If LeBron came to Chris Carter and said, where should I go? What do you think, what advice would you give LeBron about the decision he's going to make next? Uh, I hope LeBron, number one, I hope he stays in Cleveland. Uh, stay in Cleveland. He could just stay in Cleveland and no one would expect him to win rings anymore or even get to the finals. And so if he didn't win them, people would praise him for being loyal and nobody would criticize him for no longer winning it. What he means to this community is more than basketball. To be born here, become as great as he is, I hope he stays here. And listen, if he goes to another team and create a super team, he won't have the same effect. Right. He might win more championships somewhere else, but for what he means to this city. Finish it out at home because that would be a feel-good story. He's a legend there. He's not going to enhance his legacy. If he leaves Cleveland again, how will this impact his legacy? Well, it will solidify the idea that LeBron James is a mercenary and a title chaser. Me, I want what's coming to me. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tony? The world, Chico. And everything in it. LeBron was wearing a shirt with palm trees on it. Oh! Yeah, oh, done deal. Oh, done deal. Right. What is Fugazi? 
come on, you know. You don't like those super teams. You've, you've been on the record about what happened when he went to Miami. He would be doing what he always has done. He went to the Heat to, to chase rings, right? You know what you did, pal. Um, and this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Come again? Motherfucking hey, mutt! Come, you! Come, you come, fucking come, piece come, of come. shit! Yes! <laughs> yes! Past the point of no return Reach the top but still you gotta learn how to keep it I can understand one time Then you went back to Cleveland You, you didn't leave Miami and go somewhere else You went yeah. back yeah. You can't do that again That's gonna look really whack now if you start mm. doing that Nothing has changed Stop chasing rings. This, if LeBron somehow didn't win this championship, it would be one of the worst, biggest upsets in NBA history. They're facing a freaking fifth seed from the East. This would be a colossal yeah. failure if LeBron and the Lakers didn't win but it, and they will win it. But you act like he went to the Lakers by himself. Okay, he no, did just add a top five player in Anthony Davis. If he wins this one, which he should, he'll be four and six. So it's, it's fine, but I don't think it really moves the GOAT conversation one iota. You refuse to give the man the do that he deserves. What, what give does he deserve? He's three and six in the final. Hold on. Especially when you lost six. You're not going to move one Jordan person over, and I think it's kind of foolish to think that you're going well, then, to. Then, then, then Kareem's the greatest player ever. Then stop it. Then, then stop it. I have already congratulated your guy on winning his fourth ring in 10 tries. We don't want no Four congratulations. Four and six. It's over. It's we don't done. Want, we don't, we don't want that. We don't want that. And Kareem's got he more points. And Kareem's got more MVPs. And, oh, okay. He's got he the best six league MVPs. Teams, sure. Jesus Christ. I look at Michael Jordan's game versus LeBron James' game, and I say Jordan's better. First, I would like to publicly thank the Los Angeles Clippers <laughs> for doing this to me. Jordan did not have any weaknesses. I don't want to. I don't want to diminish LeBron I mean, at all. But there's weaknesses: the free throw shooting, the mid-range jump shooting. I can't point to one weakness in Michael Jordan's game. And no one can. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Hello. Case closed. Next, Jenny. Yeah, but, next. I was so what am I We now return to your regular programming. Me personally, if I was ever as good as some of these guys, I'd stay put. It's, it's different, definitely different than when we played and even back when Mike and them played. You know, I don't think those guys had the opportunities like they do now. Okay. I got to coach these kids. I don't think these kids are being taught the right way. Right, man. You know, right. they're, they're just trying to go out and get 30. I don't really see us having a head coach. You know what I mean? Like, I, KD could be a head coach. I could be a head coach. We don't need somebody to come in and put their coaching philosophy on everything that we're doing and change up the wheel and, yo, you guys need to start doing this. Jesus Christ. That might be one of the most ignorant damn things that I've heard a player say. Thank you. Why must it always be brother against brother? I, uh, that might be one of the most ignorant things I've ever heard a player say. We don't really need a coach. Why? You don't need a coach? We really don't need a coach? Steve Nash is now the head coach, but he's not really our head coach, right? Steve Nash is not the boss of me. I could be the head coach one day, you can be. It's just, we can coexist. We talk freely, openly. We don't need somebody just telling us to, you know, trying to change the wheels. Of, well, you might, depending on what you're doing and who you're going up against. That's what a coach is for. It's never been about that. Hell, AD and LeBron is allowing Frank Vogel to coach them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't understand what Kyrie is saying oh. by saying that they're all head coaches. No, Kyrie, he's the coach. 
you're the player, mm -hmm. and you're not the best player on the team. And at the end of the game, you're not the best player on the team. Katie's better than you, and Steve Nash is your coach. Let people live their lives. It's just a game. Right, and mentality and how kids need to think when it comes to the game and understanding yeah. that it's a team game and not an individual game. And it's simple, you know, just if you're supposed to be on the block, get on the block. Jason Williams is a highlight waiting to happen, and it all starts with his breathtaking ball handling. That's the guy. That's the guy. White chocolate. If you say that name, you know who you're talking about. The legend. You know, a lot of people don't use the word legend and, and don't really mean it, but when we say your name, you're a legend for real.